Hey guys, it's Mike coming to you from Vaught RV here in Fort Worth, Texas. A 2024 Whitehawk 29BH right behind me. This is a luxury family bunkhouse model. We're a little over 34 feet long, about 8,500 pounds fully loaded. It's fully loaded on the outside and fully loaded on the inside with features. Let's check it out. Hey guys, Mike Drudge. I want to show off my favorite 2024 enhancement on the Jayco 29BH Whitehawk model. And it's all right here in the outdoor kitchen. Look, the J-Port assembly now stows inside your outside kitchen area. Lift up, and now I have our mounting bracket. It goes into the J-Port. I can put my cooking assembly right here and stow it right here, right close to the kitchen area, right where it should be. One of the things I love of many is I have 21 feet of awning above me, 21 feet on the fun side of the unit. Again, I have no slide out here, so I'm not taking up valuable real estate on the patio side. It's one of the big downsides of having slide outs, opposing slide outs. Opposing slide outs are nice on what they do on the inside. It's not so great on what they do on the outside. They encroach into the patio side. Don't have that. 21 feet, got an LED light strip up on top, our speakers up there so there we can enjoy music outside here. And then here is our tankless water heater, tankless on-demand Furion water heater. So yes, those long showers can happen. You don't have to take the military showers. This is especially nice when you have kids. One kid after the other can go in there, still gonna have plenty of hot water like that. Again, we have two entrances here, and a lot of people will say, why do you have two entrances? When that slide comes in, I lose access to the bedroom. So if I pull over at a rest area, I can hop up in there for things out of the bedroom and not have to push the slide out. Can you hear those cicadas up in the trees? I'm competing with the cicadas here for audio. So there's a lot of cicadas here in North Texas this week. These steps fold in for travel. They're adjustable. These little yellow collars are right around these little knobs that you pull out to adjust if you're on uneven ground. So you have really solid point of entry in and out of the coach. If you wanna have a TV out here, you can. You uh, put the bracket here, you have power and your coax cable right under here so I can enjoy tailgating and football games and stuff right here on the patio. Your furnace vent right here, so this will get warm. And this is your potable water fill. So this is a gravity fill. This is not, doesn't have to be pressurized water. So if you are off grid, you can chug in five gallons of fresh water into this potable water fill. Now, if you're leaving out on a trip, you're gonna leave from North Texas and go to Paladura Canyon and you know that you're gonna have water at your campsite there, there's no need to fill this up. You might put just a few gallons in there to wash your hands at a rest area, to use the bathroom and so on. Otherwise, you're just putting weight in here that you don't need to haul around. Um, these are traditional fold-up steps, steel fold-up steps to get them out of the way. Frameless windows on the White Hawk. So we got frameless windows everywhere except where the slide out is. So these are awning style windows that crank out. So nice that you can leave them open and it can't rain in. So they all crank out from here and you can get ventilation, but it won't rain inside and uh, you can still get that airflow. Climate shield all the way around. So this is as close to a four season camper as you can come without being a four season camper. Everything's insulated, enclosed, and heated underbelly. So it really expands your camping season. And depending on what part of the country you're in, it would be a four season unit. Nice thick baggage doors with slam latch locks and magnet catch. Look at all this storage, how nice this is. And it's all nice and clean. It's lighted. I have power inside here. Now you can see these little bars up here. You can put uh, an outdoor table up there and stow it if you would like one. It's optional for you to add that, but they put that up there. It's also nice though too, I've found to put like fishing poles and long things up there and keep them up off the floor. 
but very nice storage. There's a light switch in here, which when you turn it on, illuminates these blue marine grade LED lights in front. Really looks foxy after dark. Makes it easy to find your unit. Diamond plating in front here, fiberglass in front. Now this is new in 2024. This whole front structure is welded aluminum. It's not wood, it's aluminum. So that matches the rest of the body entirely. It's all aluminum, very strong. I have two 30s on propane up front here that switch automatically from one to the other when they're empty. A lighted power tongue jack. This makes hooking and unhooking a breeze and leveling front to back a breeze. I have room in the battery tray here for two group 24 or group 27 batteries. If you want to upgrade those later, you can do that and we'll wait to put those in until you purchase the unit so they're good and fresh. Opposite side of our pass-through storage. Again, I have a light here and our battery disconnect. It's prepped for cameras all the way around. So cameras here, cameras in the very back, which are uh, good for safety. It's also good for security. Also our frameless window. Now all the walls, the fiberglass walls are vacuum bonded. So Jayco's a, one of very few manufacturers that vacuum bonds their walls. 144 tons of pressure for 12 minutes really virtually eliminates the possibility of delamination over the course of the lifetime of ownership, which is the last thing you want to happen to a unit. It's a slow, tedious, expensive process. Again, that's why Jayco's weigh a few more pounds and cost a few more bucks than competition and last a whole lot longer. Frameless windows, frameless windows. So these all tilt out, very nice, sleek looking. The graphic package is a little bit updated for 2024. Doesn't look a lot different, but it is updated a little bit. I have two gray water uh, holding tank valves under here in black. So your two, you get your two over here and your black valve right here, all terminating into one three inch outlet right here. Now, I have our city water connection here and our tank flush right next to it. Don't get the two confused, they're labeled. If this is your first RV experience, you're gonna put a hose here and attach it that's specifically for drinking water. And always make sure you have a water pressure regulator on this line. It's pressurized water, you need to make sure you're not putting too much pressure. This, get any old garden hose you have, an extra hose and hook it up here. And this is gonna rinse out the inside of your black tank, not your gray tank, black tank. First thing you want to do, make sure is the black tank valve is open. Then turn this on and leave it on. Go get a beverage, roll in the awning, chase the kids around, get all the lawn chairs put up and let that thing run and spray the inside of your black tank. It does a nice job of rinsing it out. And uh, you don't have to do that every trip. You don't have to do it ever if you don't want to, but my advice, best practice is to do it after a trip and before you're going to store this for, for a period to keep those sensors clean and the inside of the tank clean. This is a 50 amp coach with two AC units, so I've got a detachable 50 amp power cord right here. Here's your cable and satellite input. So if you have cable at your campsite, and many of them do, hook it up there and now I have cable inside the coach as well as over on the patio. Full-size mounted spare, as is always the case with Jayco, of course your tire cover here. This will move from right to left, so if you want to put a bike rack or something back here. So up here we're uh, prepped for the rear camera, just like we're prepped for the side cameras. What a fantastic feature on the 29BH is this rear door. So I can open this up and boom, have access to the bunk area. Again, this hinges up. So I can put bicycles, I can put a kayak, I can put you know, really any long item in here that I otherwise couldn't fit because this is hinged with a piano hinge and it stays up. I'm not strong enough to hold it up, but I gotta move this mattress, but this will stay up in the vertical position then open that up. It's also sometimes nice if you have a, a dog and you wanna put a ramp for them to get up in and out of the coach a little easier, you can do that. I've seen people use this in a lot of different ways. Plus you have these D hooks, D rings right here to secure items going down the road. So 
very nice. This is a 2024 White Hawk 29BH. So much fun stuff going on, on the outside, even more on the inside. Let's go take a look. Okay guys, now we're on the inside of this 2024 White Hawk 29BH. This is really a luxury bunkhouse, double bunkhouse model. So if you like staying in high-end hotels, you're probably gonna like staying in here because the appointments are high-end from front to back. There's a lot of things about a White Hawk that make it a cut above the other trim lines, and I've pointed them out in videos before, but just briefly, we've got a higher barreled ceiling, so it's an arched higher ceiling. It gives it more of a sense of openness. We have a skylight up here on top, which, which lets in lots of natural light. Look how much light that brings in. Really brightens up the kitchen here. Sorry for the reflection off the top of my head there. <laughs> Fireplace is going to be in all your White Hawks. A nice spacious galley. Uh, just appointments from front to back that are a cut above. Some upgraded lighting in the slide room, which I'll show off here in just a second. And in this case, the 29BH, we have double bunks. So two adults up two adults down or plenty of room for a teenager or child under here. Here's the neat thing though about this floor plan. See there's a door back there. When I get outside I'll open that up but that's really neat because I can open up this little elastic area, pop this up, and now I can put bicycles or a kayak or something long in here and have flexible storage in that space as well. And with the White Hawk, you have a ladder that makes it easily accessible up into the upper bunk. Uh, I've got power in here so the kids can be charging their gadgets and so on. Now, in Jayco's case, we've got 600 pound weight capacity up and 600 pounds down. That's, I don't know, about double what everybody else does. So you may say, look, I don't weigh that much. I understand but it's just testament to Jayco's build quality that they're putting that much capacity in these so that adults can sleep up there if they so choose. So uh, with this long slide out that houses both the table and chairs and the sofa, it really opens this up. So if you're buying this unit, you're probably gonna have kids or guests and so you're gonna appreciate having a little more elbow room. If you've got a couple kids up there and and the cousins are along for the trip. So this unit's got a freestanding table and chairs. I love this personally. Really easy to get in and out, feels like home. You're not knocking your knees on anything. Here's a neat thing, if you wanna expand this out, look how easy that is. So now we have a bigger table and a gas strut on this for extra storage for placemats, games, whatever, underneath there. That's really handy. Now these chairs do anchor down for travel. They've got little clips under here. I don't ever bother to do that myself, uh, simply because there's nowhere for these chairs to go. Once you're going down the road, it will keep them from rattling around. The biggest concern I have is them bumping together. So as long as you have one of these, on one of the two chairs, they're not gonna bump together and rub and scratch the surface, but that's why these are here and that's what I usually do. Um, nice enhanced lighting in 2024. You have this fancy little wall light up there and then notice the under sofa lights along the floor there. That's really nice and it makes a perfect night light uh, to just leave that on after dark when everybody, everybody goes to sleep. So I'm gonna kind of start back here and work my way forward on the inside of this coach. Right inside the door is our tankless water heater controls. So all the flights feathers, everything is going to tankless water heaters. This runs off propane. So you can hop in that shower, take a long shower and somebody can get in right behind you and take another long shower. Good old fashioned traditional toggle switches, which I love. They're easy to troubleshoot and they're so reliable. So our living room lights, our awning lights, slide in and out and awning in and out, and then our tank capacities. Simple, easy, reliable. Right inside the door, entry door, is a little cabinet door to utilize this otherwise wasted space behind the sink. I like that, and I'd probably be using that all the time for the dog leashes, you know, stuff like that, right inside 
the door. You have a GFI protected outlet that serves the countertop up here. I'll talk more about the galley in just a second. I already dressed the bunks, so we've got our ladder, easy to get up in there. What a great place for the kids to play, and I bet the dog is gonna love to hang out in there. <laughs> okay, that's great. You can pop this up to keep stuff from sliding around during travel if you are stowing things in there. Check out this bathroom, very bright, very airy. Corner mount sink, and I do have a medicine cabinet here right in the corner, deep medicine cabinet. A little bit more storage under the sink, and again, an undermount sink. Now this is an upgrade. I'll point out some 2024 changes as we go along, and the counter uh, surface is an upgrade from years past. Notice how it's a squared off nose instead of rounded. Looks more modern. It looks like a slab of marble, even though it's not. Much, li much lighter weight, and they can still do an undermount sink. Now we have a spacious shower. Plenty big enough for me. I'm six feet tall, average build, plenty of room for me to do what I need to do in the shower. Skylight up here, so if you are even taller, say 6'5", you got plenty of room. Now we have a glass shower enclosure, and it's got a little bit of a texture to it for a little bit of privacy and a little catch right here to open it up. So it's accordion style. I would still keep a squeegee on board to squeegee it when you're done, helps keep it clean. Here's the important thing, I'm a big believer in checklists before you take off on a trip. This would be on my checklist and that is to make sure this is secured for travel like that. Otherwise this door is going to be slamming open and closed going down the road and it might break. So put that on your checklist. It's a one piece shower surround in here and you've talked, you've heard me brag about the shower bases, the, and all Jayco products. There's three quarter inch plywood under this. It's not giving, it's not flexing. That's important because there's plumbing connections under there that you don't want giving every time you step in and out of the shower. It's something you wouldn't notice or you wouldn't even know was there if somebody didn't tell you. So that's a neat thing that Jayco does and I appreciate it. Now that we're up into the White Hawk, we have a porcelain foot flush toilet, not a plastic foot flush toilet. You can see the pink stuff in there. Don't freak out. It's not lemonade and it's certainly not pee. It is antifreeze. Everything that comes from Jayco is winterized when it gets here. That show, and you'll see it in the sinks too, um, when you're shopping around, that just tells us it's been winterized and we want it to be winterized. I have a fan up here that is powered so you can take the humidity and the heat and so on out of here. Um, very nice to have that. Now, moving up into the galley, storage is always important. I've got pantry storage that goes to the outside wall there up to down. Really nice for extra pots and pans, cans of soup, boxes of cereal, you name it, you can't have too much of it. Now, we're in what Jayco's calling vintage farmhouse. Modern farmhouse has been by far the most popular decor for the last couple model years. Uh, they've enhanced it to vintage, so we're going from modern to vintage, and the main difference is it's a shaker style cabinet, and you can see there's a little bit of a dark accent right there that gives it a little more pronounced uh, look to it, I guess. Um, but the vintage farmhouse combines modern farmhouse and vintage washed gray, which is this uh, grayish color right here. So you have a combination of this and what used to be modern farmhouse, and they're together calling it vintage farmhouse. You got that? Whatever it is, I like it. These are very similar cabinets to what we have in our home, and it's very popular in terms of what people like for, uh, for decor these days. Storage, an abundance of storage right there. You can access the area under the sink too, so you're not losing that storage. Three drawers that are full extension drawer glide with ball bearing 75 pound drawer glides. Jayco always puts solid maple on their door and drawer fronts. Also, all of the styles are pocket screwed and glued together. And the whole assembly is screwed to the frame of the unit, which means that my 188 pounds can hang from this thing 
Jayco told me I could do that. It doesn't give at all. So many other brands, if I did that, I'd yank the whole thing off the wall. It's just a testament to how strong Jayco's build quality is. Very cool. Now we have a strainer right here, sink dryer, and a cutting board sink cover as well as your stainless steel undermount sink. You can take this out here to protect the surface too if you're going to put stuff up here, but it's a nice sink dryer. This a sink dryer, dish dryer. Wireless charging, so lay your phone on there and if your phone does wireless charging, it'll start charging. If you want to have power up here for your coffee maker or your toaster, you've got it as well as USB power um, as well. Moving over into the cooking area, microwave up on top. It's not a big microwave, but big enough for warming up leftovers and so on. We have a lighted and vented range hood, vented to the outside. This is new in 2024. Everything's black, so black appliance package from microwave range hood all the way down to the oven. So I have our knife holder in the back. Nice to put your knives, scissors, and so on. Pop this up to become our backsplash. Removable grate, backlit controls here, and a nice little oven. Big enough for cookies. You gotta have fresh cookies at the campsite. More storage underneath. So check out this countertop, this new countertop. I really like this. It looks very modern. Again, it looks like a slab of marble. Squared off edges. Um, it's a lightweight material again. So even though it looks like it would be super heavy, it's not. This is a 24, 24 change too. Look at this nice backsplash uh, pattern. It looks like ceramic tile, but it's not. It's smooth, but man, just looking at it from here, I would swear that was um, actually ceramic tile. So moving back into here now, look at this really nice 10 cubic foot refrigerator. It's 12 volt fridge. So it's 12 volt, much deeper than a traditional gas absorption fridge. The industry is gravitating toward 12 volt across the board. So when you're going down the road, this is gonna run off 12 volt power from your tow vehicle. When you stop and go into Bucky's and get a barbecue sandwich and use their nice bathrooms, <laughs> this is gonna keep running off 12 volt power from your battery. So here's the important thing. When you're off grid, you have no other source of power. This is still running off 12 volt power in your batteries. So you wanna keep an eye on your battery charge. That's where this 200 watts of solar comes into play. I've got 200 watts of solar up on top. That means it's going to continuously charge your 12 volt system, your 12 volt batteries, which are gonna keep this happy. But before I leave the fridge, let me point out something. Nice big refrigerator compartment, nice big freezer compartment. Oh, I just turned this on like 20 minutes ago and there's frost in there already. Here's the neat thing. I can also open it from this side. So all these units you can open up from either side. What a fantastic feature. I really like that. So nice big freezer, nice big fridge. Great, great, great. Now moving into the living area, right across from the TV, very comfortable seating, our Insignia brand Smart TV. I've got cup holders here, got our fireplace, which will knock the chill off this unit on those cold evenings. So a lot of people will give me an eye roll when I say, man, I really like RVs with fireplaces in them. This is electric. It's, it's, if you paid your 50, 60, 80 bucks, whatever a night at the RV resort, use their power to knock the chill off, not your propane furnace. If you can get away with it, you can until it gets crazy, crazy cold. Storage on either side, a little bit of a storage, and then you have your Bluetooth stereo so you can pair your phone and then push music through the speakers inside as well as out on the patio smoke glass inserts and I've got additional um, storage up there as well. Now, say the kids brought the cousins for a trip. You got little Janie and little Jimmy in the back and a couple of their cousins come. We well, can sleep a couple kids in each one of those front bunks, 
but this is optioned as a trifold sofa so that it is a sofa now and it becomes another sleeping position. So all we have to do once we remove these back cushions is lift up the front and give it a pull, drop these legs, and look at here. Got a bed, so a cousin or two can be sleeping there. So what are we talking about? Mom and dad, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I'm thinking seven or eight can sleep in this unit comfortably. Easy to do this in reverse order, just pop that up, fold this up, pop in the legs, and then put your back cushions back where they were before. It's just that easy. So it's nice and it's quite comfortable as a sofa as well. Again, right across from the TV uh, and your drink holders on either side. Have roller shades all the way around, updated paneling material here. This is a nice thing that Jayco started in 23 is this reflective material on the outside of the roller shades that helps keep it cool in here. So. No more pleated shades in the, in the lightweights for Jayco. They're all roller shades and they're soft clothes. So very nice, very classy, and it's what you'd expect to see in other high-end units. Again, talked about the fireplace, talked about the solar. I'll talk about uh, the fact that when you're parked, the solar, think of it as a trickle charger for your batteries. This is not a super duper high wattage solar package, if you will, you can upgrade the solar quite a bit. You can upgrade to lithium batteries, you can put more solar on top, it's just a function of how you're going to use the unit. In many cases, most cases, 200 watts complements people's needs for those occasions where, they're, where they don't have shore power and it'll extend the amount of time they can be off grid. Okay, with that we'll move up into the bedroom and take a look there. Here we are in the bedroom of this unit. So all the White Hawks are gonna feature a window in the front of the coach. In this case, and in most cases, it's the, the bedroom. So we have a blackout shade here. Wow, how nice is that? You can look up at the stars while you're sleeping, but it's warm outside and I wanna help keep it cool. So I'm gonna keep that down. Um, on either side of the bed, you have hanging clothes storage. You have a closet rod and storage underneath. I have outlets on either side of the unit as well as 12 volt power on either side of the unit. Jayco's upgraded these little reading lights in 2024. That's a change and I'm glad. They used to be touch, which was handy in a way, but they were very, very sensitive and sometimes they wouldn't always uh, work the way you wanted them to. This is a toggle. It's either reading light there or night light there. So at night, that, that's just enough light to help you find your way around and not blind your partner. Do the other way for reading and you can adjust that however you like. But speaking of closet space, boom, I have this beautiful chest of drawers, place to hang jacket and hats, removable shelves in there. So that can become another closet essentially. You could even put a mirror in there. There's outlets in there for power. Somebody could be drying their hair. I don't do that, people do. But nice to have that extra storage, extra closet space in addition to these two uh, basically wardrobes for mom and dad. Now on this unit and the White Hawks in general, you have a rear camera system which can become your security system. So as the sticker implies, it's wired for observation and security. So if you have a camera in the back, camera on either side, they can be powered for security as well as going down the road, which is really, really nice. Now underneath our bed here, we got roller shades here. I have a separate door and a lot of people say, why do you have a door, two doors on the side? Why can't you just have one? Well, when the slide comes in, you lose access to the bedroom. So if you pull over at a rest area and you want to get back here and grab a shirt out of the closet or whatever, this is the way you're going to do it because the slide will impede uh, access back here. If we lift up the bed, we can see that we have storage under here. So there's a plywood base here because there's drawers on either end of the bed. So look at that. I can put socks, whatever, 
small things under on either side and I can also lift up this floor to access so those things as well. When you're shopping around, and you should, lift up the mattress of whatever unit you're looking at and see what you see. In Jayco's case, you're going to see plywood, not OSB or particle board. It's much stronger. It doesn't off gas like particle board does. It's more expensive. It's one of the reasons that Jayco's tend to weigh a few more pounds and cost a few more bucks than the competition. Then right around the corner here is actually our solar charge controller. So that's how you're going to monitor how much charge is being sent to your batteries and your battery status. You're particularly going to pay attention to that, again, if you're camping off-grid where you don't have another source of power. Now this door closes off so mom and dad can have complete privacy. It latches and locks, and speaking of latching and locking, here's another thing that should be on your list. It's designed to pull it from here so you can pull it around because it's pretty stiff. That way this door is not going to be opening and closing going down the road. Put this on your checklist. I wouldn't think to do it. I just, I'm, I'm busy when it's time to break camp. I'm more worried about getting the awning rolled in and the kids toys picked up and the dog's leashes and everything that goes along with breaking camp. You're hot, you want to get on the road. And the last thing you want to think about is come in and do stuff like this. Put it on a list, make sure somebody checks off those things, and you'll be glad you did. We, all, we have a checklist, which I can also put in the link below. You can adapt it to your own needs. Bottom line, have a checklist, a pre-travel checklist. It'll save you a headache and probably save you some money in the long run. Hey, we're in a 2024 Jayco Whitehawk. 29 bh that's a bunkhouse don't mistake the 29 to think that it's 29 feet long it's not five feet longer 29 usually approximates the length of the box itself but you have to add hitch work and bumper and so on so we're 34 feet plus long so you need a pretty decent truck to pull this at 8,500 pounds fully loaded, like I mentioned. If in doubt, give us a call. We'll look up your specific year, make, and model of your truck. And also, I'll need to know the engine size, whether it has a tow package on it, uh, things like that, so we can give you inf accurate information. Speaking of accurate information, let me address something. The most often asked question I get in these videos is why don't you include pricing? Wish you'd include a price. It's not a gimmick, it's not a secret. We want to be as transparent and open as helpful as we can. Believe me, as an RVer, I want that too. The reason we don't put the pricing in there is because we want it to be accurate. It becomes dated the moment we put that information on the videos. And there's other things that impact pricing accuracy. I did a whole separate video on that which we'll link as soon as it's available so that you can understand better why we don't put pricing but it's not to be sneaky it's only for us to be as accurate click the link below that'll take you straight to our inventory and you can see if it's available and what the pricing is there and while you're down there click like and subscribe that way you'll be the first to know when we post more videos a lot like this one hey my name's mike thanks for joining me and i'll see you next time